Hey everybody, welcome back to our video series on home charcuterie that we're doing. Um, so just give you a quick rundown of what we've done so far. A couple weeks ago we took a Boston butt that we bought at our local Mega Mart. We broke it down into its requisite pieces. We got our Copa Roll, which is right here. It's been curing in our fridge for about two, two and a half weeks now. Um, and so today what we're going to be working on is stuffing, seasoning, and getting our Copa Roll ready to go into our cure chamber where it will sit for approximately a month and a half to two months. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to get everything weighed out and ready to go. The recipe that we're using today you can find in Michael Ruman's charcuterie cookbook. Um, we are doing a little bit of a play on that. I like to spice his sweet copa recipe up with a little bit of cayenne pepper. So you can see the seasonings that we have ready over here. We have sugar, allspice, mace, coriander, cayenne pepper, and freshly ground black pepper here. That's going to create a nice flavor profile as our copa sits. Now, if you go back to our old copa video, the last time we left it, we had salted it down with our cure number two dextrose and salt. And then we let that sit in our fridge for two, two and a half weeks. Um, and so how do you know when your copa roll is ready to then stuff? The things that you're looking for is when you open it up, there's no odor. If you smell a rotten smell, if something smells tangy, if it smells off, throw it away, start your project over, it's, it didn't work. Um, so I know that this copa here is ready to go because of the coloration that I have here. So you can see that I've got brown coloration and also some pink. Now if you go to that science of charcuterie video, I'll talk about the way that the sodium nitrate and nitrite interact on the cellular level with the hemoglobin. And that's what's going on here. It's fixing this color. I can tell that the cure is working and penetrating the cells because it's turning nice and brown. Now as it sits in our cure chamber and expels that moisture, it's going to turn into a nice solid pink color. So when we slice it, it'll be a nice translucent um, color when we're all said and done with. So this is our copa. This is what we'll be working with today. I'm just going to set it over here on our spices. And then the next thing that we need to get ready is our beef bung cap. That's what you'll be stuffing your copa into. This is what it looks like coming out of the package. You can see that it is capped on one side. Um, this is not the animal's rectum. Uh, most of the time in slaughter facilities that is referred to as the bung. This is actually a different organ inside of a beef. Um, it's part of the digestive tract, but it's capped on one end, which makes it nice. We don't have to tie that end. Um, and so what I've done here, it's soaked for about 20 minutes in some warm water, just the same way that we clean those hogs casings. And now it's going to be ready to go. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to roll our copa and all these spices. Make sure we get them evenly distributed around because this is where the flavor profile is going to happen. So that's what I'll start with here. I'm just going to take all of our spices, I'm just going to get them mixed up together. I like to use a glass dish when I'm doing this so that I can see where my spices are and how they're being absorbed. I want to leave it on the meat. I don't want to be leaving these spices in the pan here when we're all said and done. The more I get on the meat, the more flavor it's going to have when it comes back out of our cure chamber. So I'm just going to rub this in like you're doing a dry rub. If you're a barbecue guy, you're, you know how that whole situation goes. You're just trying to rub this in and really get that to incorporate into the meat. Now, like we've talked about before, especially in our science of charcuterie video, what we're talking about here, we want these flavors to be absorbed into the meat. As this drying process happens, these flavors are going to get absorbed in, that sugar is going to interact with the water moisture, it's going to suck out into the spice layer, it'll draw it down into the meat. So when we slice this and get ready to eat it, it's going to be flavored all the way throughout. So you can see here that we have our copa roll. This is all covered in our spices. Now it's important that we're doing our spice mixture right before we stuff it into our beef bun cap. If you were to season this and set it into your fridge, you would have mold growth problems. It wouldn't be a good situation, trust me. The last steps that we need to do is we need to take our copa and put it into our casing. Now we're using this beef bun today, and you can see that it's quite long. What I like to do is I like to measure it out. I gave myself probably two and a half extra inches here, and I'm just going to cut that. If I were to stuff it through this casing all the way, it would rub a bunch of spices off, and I want to leave those on the meat. So this casing is nice and pliable. Like I said, I soaked it for about 20 minutes. It still is going to take some work to get in and here. So that's the next step. We're just going to gently work this. You don't want to tear your casing. These are expensive, and you don't really get more than one shot at it. So what I like to do is just try to work it on there as best I can. You want to try to get that cap all the way down onto the edge of the meat. 
Now we're using a natural casing for this process because it'll allow moisture to leave the sausage as we need it to because of course that's what may, is making this safe to eat, the loss of the water activity on the cellular level. So you can see it is quite a work to get this down in there, but it will stuff. Um, you do need to make sure you can buy different size bun caps online. This is a four to four and a half inch diameter. Now the longer you soak this, the easier this process is going to be, but trust me, you're, it's going to be difficult. You're not doing anything wrong. That's just the way that these bond caps work. They need to be stretched out, but you want to do it slowly. If you create tears in here, it's going to create an area where the water can evaporate more easily. So you can see I've got it in there slowly. Now I'm just going to work this down all the way until it's at the edge of the cap here. So it's going to take me a couple minutes here just to keep Squishing it down. I'm sure that you with creative minds out there are thinking of what exactly this looks like. We all have experience with something similar to this process, I'm sure. So as you can see here, these tears were already there when I took it, the bung out to clean it. But that's going to be okay. They don't go all the way through, you can see. Now I've got it in there. I've been working it down. And you can see it's really going to stretch. I don't want to tear this too much more, but I do want to make sure that I'm getting that casing nice and flush and tight against the meat. So I'll just poke a couple holes in it. Same thing that we do with our sausage. Make sure that it's nice and tight. We're not trapping air in there, trapping the possibility for bacteria. The last thing that we need to do is we need to tie our copa roll up. So what I'm using here is I'm just using some butcher's twine. Um, you can go to your local meat department guy. After you bought a nice expensive piece of meat from him, ask him for twine, he'll give it to you. It doesn't cost him anything. So anyway, what we're going to be doing is we're tying this up the same way that you would tie up a lamb shoulder or a beef tenderloin ready to roast. This is perfect practice for you. So what we're going to start with is we're going to take our string and we'll come back around. Now we have the open end of our bun cap and the closed end. We'll start at the opened end and what we'll do is we're going to come underneath it and the first thing you need to do is to make a loop with your string and you make an A. So you can see the A here. The loop is on the back side of my string. I'm going to come around it and up underneath. Okay, I'm going to do this again so that you guys can see. I'll do it slower. If you're trying to follow along at home, that's probably the easiest way to do this. So we'll start with our string. Okay, I'm coming underneath. My open end of my string is in my right hand. The continuation is in my left. I come underneath my open end as close to the meat as I can. Okay, I make, I pull on my string till I have a loop. I lay it underneath so that it looks like an A. Okay, now I come around the front side of my string and back through the top of the A. Now what that made was a nice pretzel shaped slip knot. This will hold but it'll also allow me to tighten it down. So I'll start by tightening that, and now I want to get this as close to the top of that meat as possible. Again, we're trying to eliminate any air that's in there. We're going to be retying this as we go, tightening it down, but this is how we're gonna start. So now we're ready to go. Now I'm going to face the copa roll away from me so that my knot is towards the body. Now I'll get some more string. Now you see we have a connected string to our roll and then we're also connected here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my loop, okay, and all I'm doing is I'm crossing it over once and I'm crossing it over again. So I have two twists in this knot. Now what I'll do is I'll work that down and over the top of my copa and I'll work this down. Now I want this to be extremely tight on the meat. As this cures, it's going to evaporate, it's going to lose a lot of moisture, it's going to lose weight, it's also going to lose volume. So if you leave this really loose, in about a week's time, all of your string will fall off and your copa will still cure, but it just won't look as good. So we're just gonna keep working this knot down until it's nice and tight. Okay, now you can see it's pinching into the meat, that's what I want. So now we're gonna go to the next step. I pull up. I make one twist so that I'm crossed over. I twist again so that I have two X's. Come over the top of my copa roll, 
Use the same exact technique if you're tying your beef tenderloin, you want to tie your prime rib roast up at Christmas time, be all fancy about it. This works extremely well. It also looks nice and impressive when it's sitting on the day dinner table. So I'm going to make sure that my string line is nice and consistent just because I'm picky that way. But this is all for appearances. After you get it nice and tight, everything else just for your own peace of mind. So I've got a nice straight line here. Again, pulling up, making one twist, making another twist. I have two X's. I come over the top of my knee, underneath, and line it up. So I'll continue to do this all the way across the meat, and then we are going to hang this in a nice, well-ventilated open spot. I prefer my pan rack in my kitchen, where it's going to drip down for the next six hours and just release some of that moisture, so. Okay guys, so now we, here we are. We are tied all the way through. Now we just need to make sure that this is going to stay nice and tight as it cures. The last thing I'm going to do, I'll cut my string here so that now I'm free all the way through. And I want to leave enough slack so that I can go back and thread underneath the underside. On this back side, all you have is loops. If you're doing this correctly, I'm just going to thread underneath each one of these loops, pulling tight. Now this string is going to give your copa nice form as it hangs. This one needs to be real tight. You need to watch out if you pull too tightly you will snap your string. I'm just keeping tension on here the whole time. Now this isn't going to be real easy if you tied this nice and tight, but it is a very necessary step. So here we are. Now you can see here this is my back side. Here's my front side where we tied all those little knots. Now the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that this is nice and tight over the top. So what I do is I come back down to my first knot, go underneath it on one side, bring that over. Now I go back underneath it on the other side of the knot. It's going to give me stability and like I said, we're trying to eliminate the air that I left a little bit when I made this first knot. It's impossible to get that super tight the first time. Now what I'm going to do is now that that's tied, I'll come back up. I'll tie this guy one more time here. Make sure that this is nice and tight. And then all I'm going to do is trim the rest of this bung off. Just unnecessary at this point. And we're going to make ourselves a nice handle to hang our copa from. So this is easy. Just make yourself a loop. Tie it over on itself. You want to make sure that it'll hang nicely in your cure chamber. You don't want to leave it too long, but you also don't want to leave it too short. Guys, and so our copa it. roll is ready to hang up. Now you can see here all this liquid in the bottom of the pan. That has just drained off of the bung and out of the copa since I've been tying it up. You can see how restricted this is in here you know, how tight these strings are. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna let this hang over my sink or over another receptacle for about the next six to eight hours. Um, at the end of that time, you can definitely see the meat through the bung. You'll be able to see the darkness of the spices and the outside of this will become almost tacky. That's when it's ready to get sprayed down with our mold starter culture. You can see how to do that in a different video and it'll go into our cure chamber, so. Happy curing. I hope this gives you a great introduction on how to make copa. And in the next video, we'll pull this back out in about a month and a half. We'll slice it up and we'll make a nice anti plate with our different sausages and our copa roll. So thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.